bars in a ring. Man, I go hard like Stan Tan. Hello and welcome to another episode of Nick United Grey again. I'm joined by um, Mariah. How you doing? Yeah, I'm alright. You know how I'm doing, man. <laughs> it's, all, it's still good to ask for. Yeah, Steve. I'm alright, man. It's still painful, but I'm alright. Good. Stevie, how you doing? You're smiling a bit too much for my liking, Elijah. <laughs> I mean, this uh, is a serious tone podcast. There. <laughs> keep it grim based. Not for me, boy. <laughs> I'm here to laugh away the pain. <laughs> and Doctor Mark, why you did? What's going on, man? Listen, a lot. This is therapy for me right now. A lot to get off my chest. All right, before we get into this intense ther- therapy session, you know, you know what I got to do. We got the patron last week put up a review, a preview of the L- L- Leipzig game. If you read it, you would have known that. Everything I said came out exactly right. So, you know, bet, you better sign up, bros. Better sign up. Um, got more content coming this week. And um, after that performance yesterday, the Pogba watch is going to be really interesting. Um, hopefully, another piece as well. Uh, the Discord, I'm glad, I'm glad I wasn't there for the game on Sunday. But um, I heard it was very, um, well... If you're if you're a United fan, Samba. If you're a rival fan, must have been very very happy and lively. But um, yeah, join the Discord. Got over a thousand members in the United section, I think. Or oh, am I wrong? I'm, I'm not sure. But there's loads of United fans there. Yeah, Chelsea. just keep throwing numbers at them. They won't know what hit them. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Just man. join in it. You are asking yeah. too much questions. Join. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you're in the YouTube live now, uh, please subscribe. So, since you're here, just click on that subscribe button. I'm not sure where it is on your screen, but it shouldn't be too hard to navigate. Calm, obviously. So, and now, obviously, the the YouTube. I was just about to talk about the vid- the visuals for this is going to be well, it's live now. But I mean, the the, <laughs> the proper visuals are, are going to come on on Wednesday. So you know, hey man, that's enough. Um, deferring from what you all want to hear and see. Um, there's classic stalling tactics here, <laughs> but I'm actually oh, what else have I not mentioned? Yeah, I know, but um, <laughs> his autobiography came out a few years yeah. ago. <laughs> I mean, uh, Poch is on the MNF as well, but you, you don't need to watch that, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, but we're gonna do it a bit differently because the game on Sunday was such a contrast to the game on Tuesday. I thought, why not look at the differences between the game. Just look at them sim- sim- simultaneously. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna throw out a few things, a few different like topics of conversation, and then we'll just talk about the differences between Tuesday, was it Wednesday or midweek and Sunday. First off, I'm gonna have to go with the midfield, and since Mario and Steve were, Steve were on yesterday, I want to hear from Michael first. What do you think the Big difference was with the midfield between those two perform two contrasting performances. Um, at Tomane and Bruno, isn't it? Um, the thing is with the diamond, it seemed to work. Obviously, the result the results are much different. In it. Obviously, five 0 Leipzig, and that mainly changed when Rashford came on. Obviously, he bagged a hat trick compared to yesterday, where you got two defensive players. Like, Tomine is not brave enough on the ball. Like, Tomine, I, I don't want to bury him, but I, I don't rate him as a baller. And I think in midfield, if you've got Fred there, who's, who's running around, who's an energetic one, like, Tomine, for me, surplus to requirements. So when you've got him as one of the, sort of, the, the right of the diamond, and you've got Paul Pogba as the left, I think mean, it's very unbalanced there. It's very, very unbalanced there. And you got Bruno as well, who, like, I know this has been on to him. I saw that guy yesterday. He was just, he pressed triangle a few too many times to my liking. And it's, it's, it's no surprise that he got taken off. But normally, Bruno, he's on to the last minute. So you could see why. Uh, the formation just didn't work, man. The formation didn't work, especially we're playing narrow and they've got wing backs. And that, you got uh, you got Paul Pogba, who normally doesn't track back. You got him tracking back, a wing back. And that's how we get. Uh, the penalty for the goal. So it worked. It worked against Leipzig, but he don't know his best formation. The fact that at half time it we started as a diamond, then he switched back to four two three one, 
at least he shows he's trying to manage the game in play. But for me, it shows a man who who's not sure what his best team is. He doesn't know what his best team is. And it's scary. Every manager since Fergie left, you always say the same thing. They don't know what their best team is. What I don't understand is that pre-lockdown, I know after lockdown, like Jude, when we came back, when we won in that crazy run and we secured third, I'm not saying Matic and Pogba as the pivot is the long-term answer, but it seemed to work. And I don't know what happened because they even gave Matic a new three-year contract to say almost to sort of praise his performances. Now nah, you don't want him in the team. So I just don't understand what's changed from after from that run in lockdown till now. Why doesn't he trust Matic and Pogba in the pivot anymore? What's going on? What's going on? Well, you speak of Pogba and Matic, um, and you spoke of Fred and McTominay as well. And I want to ask Mariah about them too, because there's a quote from Skulls. He was on the the panel yesterday for Premier League Productions, and um, he said. It's as poor as I've seen Manchester United at Old Trafford, to be honest with you. I said at half-time, if you're going to get your best, most creative players who can score goals on the ball, then the two in midfield have to have some kind of possession and some kind of control. But the quality was missing from them too, talking about Fred and McTominay. They were playing as centre-halves, not central midfield players. There was a lack of fight, a lack of spirit, a lack of determination to get into the box to create chances like you would expect of 10 minutes ago. So... With regards to Skulls' words, what was your assessment of the performance of Fred McTominay, Mariah? Um, He's up and down in terms of his analysis, Skulls, but in regards to what he said there, spot on, completely spot on. Um, McTominay is a coward, and he's a coward in the most interesting of ways because obviously we, we see that he talks a lot, talks a great talk, people shouldn't wear chains, Van der Beek, don't worry about playing, you'll get your opportunity, etc., 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 so he does all that stuff. But the thing is, and I said it on the pod and the guys disagreed with me, this guy knows he is not a footballer. He knows that the only reason that he is playing at this level is because of Jose Mourinho. And I feel like Jose Mourinho almost did it to spite us. Like this is the last, this is the last bit I'm going to give you like, before I leave. You're going to have to have this bum in and around your first team squad. And as a result, like he's, he's stuck with us ever since, yeah? Fred was our holding midfielder. You know what Fred is like, innit? Like, the thing about... Like I say, when everyone was hyping up his performances in Europe, he thrives in chaos. He thrives in chaos. Arsenal were organised. They weren't chaotic in terms of how they were pressing us. Everybody knew exactly what they were trying to do in it. They had their pressing triggers. A man like Fred is, is a man that will see the ball bounce in front of him and decide not to engage and get out PMP'd by Lacazette. Lacazette. So you've got Fred at the base of your midfield, so he's not he's not capable of receiving it off the centre backs and playing out under pressure. You've got McTominay, who's supposed to be your right side of central midfielder, who's kind of drifting all over. He was popping up all over the place. Sometimes he was sitting on Fred's head, sometimes he was on the left, sometimes he was on the right. So between the two of them, you're not even getting into the into the middle, like you're not even getting into the first phase of getting into the middle middle third of the pitch because they can't even get the ball off your center central defenders. So then you've got Pogba trying to come in from the left to try and make things happen. And Pogba, as Pogba does, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It definitely didn't yesterday. Uh, and then Bruno was just kind of a bit in no man's land. Like, he was poor when he got the ball, but normally you come out of a game and you remember, like, Bruno trying, like, 15 ridiculous passes. When I think back to the game, I, I remember him maybe trying a handful and obviously that crazy shot at the start of the second half. But for us, like Michael said, if that's how you, we want to play with that four, four, one, two, one, two kind of midfield diamond thing going on, you need to have Donny playing. You need to have Donny playing, first of all. He, I, I said it when I watched him about two or three times, and we're talking about cameos here, yeah? Of all our midfielders, he is the best actual midfielder. So when I say he's the best actual midfielder, what I mean is that he is the midfielder who knows how to play midfield with sense in it. So he knows when to speed it up. He knows when to slow it down. He knows when to play one touch. He knows when to use his, his feet to give himself a bit more space and a bit more time. He knows when to make off the ball runs that will open up space for other midfielders. When you switch that out for McTominay, that's already a ridiculous... That's a ridiculous drop-off. It's, drop a, it's, off a, it's a crazy drop-off. That's in a standard. ridiculous drop-off in quality, Ma, there, Ma, yeah? McTominay don't know triangles. He, he doesn't, doesn't know he triangles. Don't, bro, he don't know ball, man. He don't he know, know ball. angles, fam. Yeah? And, then, and then then, you're switching Matic, who's a steady old head for Fred, yeah? Say whatever you want about Matic, yeah? Physically, he, he dominates. 
And he's also capable at, pl at playing out of the press at times, in it? And he's also pl capable of playing out of pressure and progressing the ball up the pitch. So when you took those two out, when you took out um, Donny and Donny and Matic and you brought in McTominay and you brought in Bruno, two players who we know in possession are absolutely haphazard, how else did you expect it to play out? He probably didn't expect them to press, in it. That's not what we've seen from Arsenal um, over this time. We've heard people talk about them being cautious. But then you adjust to that. You At halftime, you make changes to change the game around. And you just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to answer you... your question, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did. Um, Stevie, um, go... so Leipzig was strange because Leipzig did press us um, but first 25-30 minutes we were able to play out that press pretty comfortably and it was a very intense game it was very end-to-end -end, and it was that's probably the most intense I've seen us play so in terms of having Matic and Van der Beek there what did it do that was so different that we were able to play out un under a press because Leipzig pressed us just as much and they played a very similar system to Arsenal as well. Yeah, I think he's an interesting one. Man. Why did you give me the question where I can't rant on United, man? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> now I'm to about things. <laughs> I, um, yeah, no, I think with Leipzig, um, I'd, I'd say one, um, in the Arsenal game, I think they executed the press very well and I think the pressers in um, El Nene, Partey, um, and Gabriel did an absolute amazing job and they executed it down to a T. Whereas perhaps if you look at Leipzig, um, Upamecano uh, wasn't doing the, the the stellar job that we perhaps expected him to. And I don't think their midfield were as effective as the Arsenal two, who were absolutely incredible on, um, on Sunday. But also if you look at the profile player of Van der Beek and Matic, you would say that they are generally two of the most comfortable in possession um, in our team. And I don't think we have a lot of players within our team who actually retain the ball very well. And I think in Matic and Van der Beek, you have people who are intelligent, um, wise with the ball and use it effectively. Whereas um, I think one of the main problems we had against Arsenal is that um, uh, Fernandez is insistent on giving the ball away wherever it is, and like I love Fernandez, but it's it, it it's ridiculous. Um, Why and do you also, I, I don't understand because he's. I mean, most of the games he's played in, he's contributed effectively. Um, I wouldn't say he's been uh, imperious on the of, pitch. Interesting but... use of the word. <laughs> Uh, Mariah, it's too early to come out. We'll do this later on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but but with um, with uh, Matic and yeah, with Matic and Van der Beek, I just think they're they're more effective on the ball. With McTominay, I think it was McTominay. No, it was Fred rather playing at the base. He's not good in possession. Um, and if you're playing at the base of midfield, you need someone who's going to take the ball, who's got a good first touch and can distribute it effectively. And with Fred, some games he's all right um, and some games is completely a miss. And then McTominay playing on the right side of the diamond, positionally, he didn't know what to do. He was dropping back as well, almost trying to play that DM position, which he can't play anyway. Um, but he seemed to be more natural in that area of the pitch, which is reducing the amount of angles we have taking space that Fred should be occupying and in the end doesn't matter where either of them were on the pitch they couldn't do anything with and to be honest without the ball either so I think um I think it was just a shift in in personnel that probably resulted in us being a bit more uncomfortable but yeah, also even, even as um, I'm sorry to interject even as I think back to mm. the game against Leipzig we had press resistant players who played out of the press Pogba decided to be a man against Leipzig and very early he was able to play out of the press and create space. Van der Beek did the same thing too. So when you're, listen, the thing about the press is if you can play out of it, gaps are there for you to attack. It's just the fact that you have to be a good player to be able to play out of that sort of press. What we were able to do was do that a few times. And when you look at even the goals that we scored, even when Rashford came on, they were kind of like, even though they weren't necessarily us like winning the ball high up, they were kind of out of shape and gaps. We just 
took advantage of gaps. And I think as the game went on and the press naturally wasn't being as effective as they wanted it to be, teams' intensity tends to die off as the game as the game goes on when you're pressing that much. It, it eats up so much of your energy. And I think the way teams are able to keep their energy levels up are when they see it being successful. So we were all right. Like, I think back to the Leipzig game and did they create any clear chances? No, no they didn't create any clear chances. And then once we had Rashford's pace and ability um, on the break, um, then it was it was curtains for them. But it was having those guys in deeper areas who were able to evade the press, give it to teammates and progress us up the pitch slowly is, that which is what allowed us to have a much more comfortable game. So I guess that comes back to the fact that Maybe it's not necessarily as simple as just teams playing against the press. It's the personnel that we use when we are play when teams decide to play us against the press. So I think in terms of obviously, because if a team starts pressing against you, you're not necessarily going to make three subs ten minutes in. There are things you can do in the short term before bringing on players with different skill sets. So for me, I'm looking to bypass the midfield. I'm looking to bypass the midfield, and specifically against Arsenal, I'm looking to target. Bellerin and Holding. That's the weaker pairing in comparison to Gabriel and Turney. So I'm looking to I'm looking to put Rashford on that side because he runs the channels really well and target those two guys. And as you're getting joy going long, they're either gonna have to they're either gonna have to come and take it right off the hair's feet, or they're gonna have to step off a bit so those guys at the back aren't as, as exposed. And once those guys aren't as exposed because the midfield has stepped off. Now your midfielders have more space to play. Because really, yeah, when you're talking about professional level, all these guys can play football to an extent, right? And once you give them time and space, they can all be effective footballers to varying degrees. So we see that McTominay, and, well, not really McTominay, but Fred, when he has a bit more time and space to do things, he can be effective and he can have good performances. So I think that's how you negate that. And then as the game goes on, you start bringing on your specialists who are able to play out of the press and then your team is more, more cohesive going forward. Uh, it's not rocket science, I don't think. I don't think I'm saying anything that's too complicated. I but mean, the crazy thing is, he did, was it the 68th minute, he took off Fred and brought on Matic. So it's like, yeah. did it take him 68 minutes to clock that, rah, Fred is not a ball carrier, Fred can't deal with the press. That's what is, is baffling me. Like, I think I think the only reason why Fred came off was because he was on a yellow card. Because if not, I think my McTominay definitely comes off. Yeah. And I think that is it. So you're just protecting him. Yeah. Because Fred got a yellow card quite early on the break. Mm, true. So. true. Fred being Fred in it. And the thing yeah, about that is that McTominay being on almost meant that we had the, a man less. Facts. Yeah. Basically. He was, he was absolutely garbage. <laughs> he was absolutely garbage. That performance was so abject. And then what pissed me off the most is he came off the pitch, yeah. And on the, I could see the Sky Sports cameras following him, and he was looking so angry and disappointed at this performance. Like, Actor, oh. like players of his personnel can't can't actually be at, at the club. I remember a couple of years ago they're saying this guy is the future of the club. Fuck me, man. We've gone. To I, 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 I want to know if you said that. I want their address. What do you think, <laughs> Elijah? When you when you look at the two performances, what what do you think um, was the difference? And um, just tagging on to that, do you think she played into? Um, into Arsenal's hands. Here we go. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just asking the question. I think I think the midfield is pretty interesting because you know me. So I went back and I looked at when we played the diamond shape, and you know when Oli first came in, he was playing that um, four three three where he had the false nine, so it kind of worked like a di diamond. And I saw all the midfield shapes he had. And most of them, he had Matic at the base. And even when McTominay played, I think the I think there was only three times that he played at the base. And that was versus Liverpool at home where Matic was injured. We drew 0-0. And the last two games of the season where it was Huddersfield and Cardiff, we drew versus Huddersfield and we lost versus Car Cardiff. Last season, we played the Diamond once against e Everton, the midfield was Matic, McTominay, Fred and Bruno. Matic again played at the base of the the diamond. PSG, when we changed to the diamond, McTominay was at the base of the diamond. So it was very strange that he went with the decision to play with Fred at, at the base because if you think about it, Fred is very good at intercepting, anticipating intercepting and he's 
can and he can harass people. So if you put Fred on that right path where they have Saka, they have Tierney, they have um Aubameyang, very effective. Mert Tomine, he he plays like he's a he's a centre half. He will sag back into that role and it will essentially become a back three anyway. So I didn't get why he put Fred there because it just it didn't suit. You know what I think I. I I think he was scared that McTominay is so bad in possession at yeah. the base that if he played him there, that we we wouldn't be able to get a grip just on the use him as out. a decoy. Just yeah, use him as a decoy. Just both as bad as each other. Just use him as a decoy. Don't pass the ball to him. Just have him there so you can make someone mark him and then pass to the actual footballers on the pitch. But I think another thing that is important for me is that as much as people will... People have criticised Martial this season. I do believe at, against Leipzig, we did build up down that left hand side. Left hand yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, be careful. Go on. No, nah, he, he, he <laughs> did. He, we did build up that left hand side quite a lot, and he he was making the ball sick. He got fouled a lot. He, he was making. He was, he was getting us up the pitch, and then Greenwood yesterday was very bad in the first half. Really, that's probably the worst I've seen him. But I mean, he's coming up against Gabriel. He's not physically imposing that's cool Rashford with his back to the goal he wasn't the best either he did turn Gabriel once um and he got the yellow card he did he, he got the ball in space another time I think the ball just broke to him um and he played the nice ball into Greenwood but I do believe that it was it wasn't it, it was so strange because I just feel like with with it, it's so it's so inexplicable to explain how the performances were so different. It was just, maybe it was just the fact that it was just K, it was, because it was just chaos versus Leipzig. Damn, bro. Just... Chaos, bro. That's what Fred does. Chaos. Arsenal's <laughs> team wasn't chaotic. Arsenal's team was organised, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, like you say, you call it in transition, interceptions. Chaos, bro. That's what Fred does. The minute if anybody's yeah. playing against him with sense, he, he's, he becomes ineffectual. He becomes okay, ineffectual, man. man. Piece of shit. Bro. For me, uh, Cavani had to play yesterday, man, because... Why? Nah, He's because... No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, listen, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Yesterday, yeah, Arsenal were pressing from the front. You knew Arsenal were going to press us. For me, that's not the game that Greenwood needs to play in. Perhaps off the bench, he could come on and do a thing. But if you look at um, Arsenal's defenders... We need somebody who can be physically imposing and actually give them something to worry about with his back turn to goal. And for me, if the press is not working, having the out ball of Cavani where you know you can lump it forward and have someone who can relieve the pressure when the game's not going in your way and you can't pass it out, to me, is a no-brainer. And with Cavani's movement and his ability in the air, it just gives us more options if we can't press out. And for me, that game wasn't the right game for Greenwood to be starting. And even if he was going to start, I think after about 45 minutes, even 50 minutes, you can see that we need another option. I think it would have made sense to just bring him on earlier and then give us that, that just that long ball option. I don't think he's something different. anywhere near sharp enough yet. Pardon? I, I cannot move. He's I, not anywhere near sharp enough yet. I, I can't move. You, you're but, you're I, very much wishful thinking on your part. Fam? Fam? That's it, fam. That's it, fam. Fam, fam. Greenwood <laughs> Bro, Greenwood could, was moving quicker than Cavani, and that's a big, that's a big madness. But um, I, I've actually got quite a few questions about Rashford, which it was a po it was a polarizing performance because some people said um he did he did the best he could, other people were weren't impressed. So um, this question from Marshall, Marshall way too was to set Sebi. Um, he wants to know about um, why Rashford isn't able to play as a striker unless it's against t tied legs, and why the ball was bouncing <laughs> off of him. <laughs> wow, that's hot! Um, and um, I love a troll, man. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Another, and um, let me find it because I. Oh. That's a hot question. That's a mad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sebi, we'll, we'll try and answer that, but Sebi will have to address that on the account tomorrow. Yeah, um, and then I think Jordan Dixon came 
off the back of that and said um, Rash was high, highly ineffective yesterday. He was terrible. And the difference between Martial and Rashford up front is night and day. Um, Rashford makes Martial look like prime Didier Drogba for holding up the ball. I mean, that's a quite... Yikes. Yeah, this is getting yeah. abusive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny me. because... Me personally, I didn't think Rashford played particularly well. Um, he did some good things, but I do think with his back to goal, he is not good at all. He's, and yeah, I do he's, think... yeah, up top to not his thing, man. He's best, he's best. I think we said a couple of weeks ago, best coming off the wing, man. He back to goal. That's not his. That's not his game, man. He's explosive. He's quick. He's rapid, running at you with the ball. You don't want him running at you. That's what you know. All this back to goal stuff. Like he put in a good ball for Greenwood in the first half, but apart from that. I can't really remember anything he did of significance in the game. And don't get me wrong, he wasn't getting much service. But, you know, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I think it was quite comfortable for the Arsenal defence yesterday. Um, I, yeah, I just don't think that's his game. Martial's better up top. I think, I think that's fair to say, man. Uh, he gives you a lot more. He's hold up plays a, a lot better. He can bring people in. I don't think Ra- Ra- Rashford would get bullied. Unless he's playing on the shoulder. I don't think you're going to get that much from Rashford. Agreed, but I think um, you have to look at where he got the ball against Arsenal. I was one of the people, I was all right with him, man. He he worked hard. He worked hard considering what, what, what he got. Like, the thing is, you can play any sort of striker up top. Essentially, their job is to get you goals, isn't it? There's, they're different. They're obviously, the best guys are like your guys, like your Lewandowski's, your Canes, whatever, who give you the all-round game. But Rashford doesn't necessarily need to have the back-to-goal game to be successful. What it does mean if he hasn't got a good back to goal game that is that he plays in a team that is getting him the ball in positions where he's able to use his best attributes to the best of his ability. So it's the things you guys have mentioned on the shoulder, on the half turn, where he can turn at guys, where he has an opportunity to shift and shoot, shift and try and beat a man, stop, start sort of stuff. But for me, I thought he was okay. He tried, he, he got into duels, he won some, he lost some, he beat Gabriel once, he created the one. C- clear chance we no, won. Yeah, that, yeah, for Greenwood. Yeah, no, it was calm. And bro, he created that chance from basically in our box. And he's played a defence splitting pass, which has taken out Holden. And on another day, Greenwood puts that through Leno's legs, man. So, yeah, Martial could have played and him being able to maintain possession would have been good. But we've seen these performances where... The thing is, we've seen these performances where we haven't been able to play out of the press. And maybe the Martial of the end of COVID where he was just like, you know what, I'm carrying you bums, um, would be able to put in a performance. But the Martial that we've seen since we've come back, I'm not sure. I am not I, sure what we... I don't think what... Martial playing yesterday changes the result. I'm no. not trying to say that. I don't, I don't think that at all. Um, I, I just don't think uh, up front uh, Rashford's best position, that's all. I think the tactics were all wrong. I don't think Martial changes that in truth. I really yeah, I don't. Think... I, I, think, I think the tactics were shocking. And uh, Arsenal, Arteta uh, actually came with a game plan which nullified nullif- nullified us very well. Um, I've got another question regarding the tactics, actually. Um, this from Baller DB. Now we know the diamond formation doesn't work for us. What's the best formation going forward? Um, it was interesting at half time, switched to a 4 2 3 1. But he played Pog Pogba out wide and not Bruno. But my dream is getting ever closer, and Bruno is slowly shifting to the right hand side I can see it coming and I just want it to happen so he can start whipping him th- whipping in them balls but apparently now we have to s- sack off the diamond because it didn't work for one game but um, what what do you think is our best formation where <sighs> that it encompasses all our best attributes and lessens our weaknesses as much I think as possible if I'm honest I think our best formation takes Carrick, McKenna, Phelan and Solskjaer off the subs bench and brings in Pochettino and his line of coaching. <laughs> I think whatever formation we play, we're not going to see the best of these players. It genuinely does not matter. Oli doesn't know what he's doing. He can't coach these players. We switch him from formation to formation and you actually need some consistency in what you're doing to actually... Um, build up some comfortability in the way you play. I still think with the personnel we have that the diamond is probably the one that gets the most out of our players. But I think if you look at the personnel we chose yesterday, that weren't the right personnel for that formation. You can't have McTominay um, on the right, uh, Fred at the base, 
Pogba left didn't seem to really work either. And then when he went four two three one with Pogba left of midfield, it was, it was it was shocking as well. So I don't necessarily think we should be abandoning this diamond, but I genuinely feel whatever formation we take up with Ole still um, still at the helm, it's not going to prove fruitful for us over um, a period of games. For me, um, four three three. Um... We would start with DDG and goal. Obviously, we want Basaka just because. Uh, and then a centre-back pairing of uh, ideally Bailly and Tuanzebe, but a Bailly, the permacroc, I'll go with Lindelof and Tuanzebe. And then um, we'd have... Um, <laughs> Two centre-backs like that is a bit mad, you know? Yeah. And then who I'd have sitting is is Matic. And then we'd have um, Van Der Beek and Pogba as our two are two offensive central midfielders. And then it's a forward line of Greenwood, Rashford and, and Marshall. So essentially what I think um, our, our biggest issue probably in terms of structure is, is actually how porous we are uh, defensively. So, I mean, even though I put Matic in there, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got no legs in it. So um, he, he's going to get found out. But what, I, what my hope is, is that with Van der Beek, uh, he's a bit more conscious uh, in, in, and more diligent in his midfield role and what that means is that he's able to, to, to pro provide support for Matic which Pogba doesn't do to the best of his ability we saw yesterday that when Pogba when Pogba tries to get back and it's what the third time this season or third time in, in recent memory where he's conceded a, a penalty so we really don't want him even coming back in transition so I'm giving that I'm giving that job to, to Donny uh, and in the front line we've got Rashford on the left on the half turn where he's able to get into space, Marshall playing up top. Uh, my, my issue is, I know how I want us to play, but even as I'm discussing it, I think of the issues with the players playing in those positions. The issue we have on the right-hand side now is, Juan Bissaka, yeah, he's so, like, average at progressing play that whoever plays in front of him, it makes it very hard for them to be effective. So what ends up happening is that we just don't use the right-hand side. We just completely... Forget using the right-hand yeah. side and we just try and build all our play down the left-hand side of the pitch. So it's a, it's a big problem for us. It's a big yeah, problem no, for yeah, us you can't, you can't attack Juan Basaka. He's very good defensively. I guess, I guess that's the... In that's certain the aspects, game, it? Not defensively. He excels in certain aspects. Well, of no, one-on-ones. One one-on-ones. On yeah, that's yeah literally. That's a, that's subset, a subset of a subset, yeah? Yeah. Give him that. No, he, no, he, does, he does sleep on crosses sometimes. Like, you let yeah. Aubameyang... A lot. Uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Profits, uh, a lot, but maybe he's thinking about all them girl problems you've got. Anyway, but um, in in truth, I think it's the problem in the modern game, isn't it? Like with the modern game, obviously we're requiring fullbacks to attack, and he that's just not his skill set. For we we knew we, we must have known that when we bought him. I don't think we were watching Crystal Palace them times and thinking, right, this guy can cross the ball, or this guy is is given an option on the overlap. We knew that this was he he's back. Maybe that's why he wanted to get. That's why maybe that's why he was cutting for Jaden Sancho so much this summer because you're thinking if I get an out and out winger that can compensate for the lack of uh, Wamba Zaka's progress as a as a right fullback. But in truth, I do like that formation. Where I think four three three is the better one. I, he's fixated on this two pivot, and obviously I know I was saying about Matic and Pogba, but I think you can literally release one, have one on the. In, in the DM position, which should be Matic, and have two actual midfielders. And I think having having them in the three, where one is more defensive to be minded, i.e. Matic, someone's in, the one in transition is sort of Donny. Uh, I think that's a good one. And then they have Pogba a bit more further up, not playing an actual 10, but probably an eight, you know, uh, where he does, he should track back, but he's not his sole responsibility because we, we know he's not good at, at tracking back. He, he When it comes to tackles, he's sloppy. He reminds me of Paul Scholes in that regard. When it comes to the defensive side of his game, he just lacks. But I think what gets people frustrated is that you're not seeing the a good offensive side of Paul Popper's game. So when he's making these defensive mistakes, it's hard to sort of back it because you're like, OK, you made a mistake, but what are you doing forward play? Not a lot. Not a lot. You and know, it's with scary. That 4-3-3, that three, three, yeah, like, I think is admirable, yeah. But in reality, I feel like with the personnel we have, it's not gonna cut the mustard because if you look at if you look at the way City did it, yeah, with their two offensive players like Silva and KDB, like absolutely imperious on the ball, rarely lose possession and always make the right cho choice on the ball. Like two of the best probably 
um, ball playing centre mids you could have. Where you look at us, got Danny van der Beek, who's good. Pogba, who is very rarely good for us. Yeah, and then, okay, I'm going to stop you there, sir. And then, I'm going to let you land. Let me land. I'm not going to let you land. Let me land. I'm not going to let you land. Let me trying to hijack the plane. Let him land. Stop trying to hijack the plane. Man, this plane is landing. Whether you like it or not. Terrorist. Calm down. Man, come like a terrorist. That is a terrorist. No, And then, and then Matic, yeah, at the base, he cannot cover the space like a Fernandinho would, like like someone in the Liverpool free would, because they're high energy, they they know their job and they execute it diligently. I don't think we have the personnel in order to effectively play that free in, in midfield with the with the two players you want to play it with. Um it was interesting because you made a significant exclusion from the eleven, Mariah, um, our boy Bruno, and our Question from Superfly MK asked, is it time to make Bruno a, a super sub? Okay, no, sixth man of the year, are you mad? <laughs> 20 minutes left, tight game, whatever, man. We don't mind you losing it 15 times in 20 that, minutes. That gunslinger. You're going to get a penalty and you're going to get an assist. So we can we can live with that. Um, again, the thing is, yeah, even when we talk about formations, etc., 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 yeah, this all fails from what the players are getting put into their head. What they get put into their head comes from the manager, the coach, and his coaching team. So Bruno, I think that's how he's played. My understanding is that's how he played at Sporting Lisbon. And it was a lot more tolerable because he was the best player in a team that was clearly bums. And it was like, the only way we can win is this guy just doing his thing. We don't need you to play like that here. But there's definitely an element of his instincts not being curbed. He just literally just goes out there and he's a freestyle bowler. He's a free start. So, like you say, Elijah, I think Oli is seeing more and more how detrimental it is to the overall team performance. But like a Stevie, still wants to use him because he's able to put numbers hey, on. Hey, the- hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he still wants to use him because he's able to put numbers on the board. Um, Bruno coming off the bench. I just want him gone, man. I just, I don't even what? want. I just what, what, want Bruno him. or Pogba? Bruno, I just want him gone. If you want wow. Bruno gone, take Pogba with you. No. Please. I want Bruno gone. No, nah, no, nah, Bruno, nah, Bruno has to stay, man. Bruno has to stay. Why does Bruno have to stay? All you guys acknowledge is that, oh, he plays shit. Oh, but he grabbed the, an assist, though. He grabbed the <laughs> penalty. He's, 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 yeah, he's grabbing numbers. Oh, he's, grab, he's, grab, he's grabbing numbers. Bro. Bro. His goals are penalties. You know, oh, yeah, he gets to the back of the net. His goals are penalties, bro. Pogba concedes yeah, penalties. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Get him no, out of my club, man. Point. Jeez, no, um, the thing is, I've been pulling up. Goals and, and his goals and stuff, his goals are penalties. How many, yeah, of his assists that he get are, are chances where he's putting it on a plate? Or are they just modern-day assists like the goal Rashford got against Brighton where he still has to, like, chop three, man, <laughs> put it onto his left hand. <laughs> <up. laughs> <Bruno, Bruno, laughs> like, man said modern-day assists. So if, so, if, so if his goals are mainly penalties and his assists are mainly the assists where... The well, no, let, let's find out about the assists. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Don't let him land the plane. I'm being a terrorist, though. I'm a terrorist. If his goals are mainly penalties and his assists are assists where the player still has a lot of work to do to finish and throughout the 90 minutes he's constantly losing the ball what inherent value is he bringing when you're looking deeply into his performances I don't want to we'll talk about Pogba I have a whole podcast every week where I talk about Pogba so when I'm asking you about Bruno don't mention Pogba Stevie answer my questions on Bruno so if that's what he's bringing for you every single 90 minutes talk to me explain why he must stay you know what, yeah? You think I'm coming to argue with you, but I'm not. That was very convincing monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Um, I've nothing uh, to say. Uh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> let, let him stay. Let Michael, him imp- to, uh, no, to no, answer no. your question about the assist, um, you, know, yeah. you, know about, you know about X saying whatever, which is the expected assist you're, you, you're expected to make from the passes you make. Um Bruno's was well last season. His was two point seven six, and he got seven assists, which shows that he was <laughs> he was given assists that were what like it basically. I'm was telling brilliant. man, this is, I'm telling man, he brilliant. pulls up numbers. 
I, I, I could think of the Bournemouth game, the, the Martial goal where he puts it top corner and Bruno, all he did was just pass it five yards and then Martial done the rest. So yeah, yeah he's a bit of a gunslinger. No, he's a gunslinger. No, he, shoot, he, he literally shoot like, that's what he did against uh, Arsenal yesterday. He was just shooting from anywhere. I saw that, I was like, right, this guy is just pressing a whole lot of triangle and circle. But, um, but no, I, th- I think he might have come, let, let, him, let him do impact sub, innit? I would love to see a triumvirate of, as you say, Matic, Pogba, and Van Dijk. Man said a triumvirate. And we stop you there. Yeah. <laughs> a triumvirate. <laughs> a triumvirate. <laughs> like, man, I didn't even get it right. I didn't even get it right. I'm just sitting in that bad boy piece of information. A triumvirate. What did you say? I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to explain my language. I'm trying to say. A triumvirate. <laughs> <laughs> the way you dropped it, there, you thought no one was going to say anything. That boy, and he said, "Yeah." I don't say. I don't say. I don't say. How do you say? That's a mad thing. At Umbre, as you all know, that would be the name of this pod. At Umbre, fam. I wouldn't even say? try having to spell that. There's that's a R in there that you missed out in the second half of the word, man. It's calm though. How do you say? How do you say? I Umbre. You said try Umbre. I'm trying to. I'm trying is. to extend the vocab. Okay. I mean, right. If you're gonna drop the, if you're gonna drop the grammar, drop it right. No, Mariah, no, you true. rattled him. You rattled him earlier before we were recording when you dropped cognizant. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. When he said cognizant, I said, nah, nah. I need to get a little word in there myself, fam. I said, I need oh. to get the word, and I, I, I just didn't know the word in full, fam. I didn't Sorry, know but anyway, Michael, you're talking about your triumvirate. Yeah, I'm sticking with that triumvirate, fam. That, that, <laughs> um, I'm being wrong and strong. Um, <laughs> now. Them three, I want to see them three in midfield, innit? My triumvirate of Matic, Van de Beek and Pogba. This time we haven't seen, innit? Let, let's see let's see someone who can hold, who can bring the ball out from the fence. And two genuine ballers, probably the best. In terms of, uh, I think midfield ballers, definitely, I could say, uh, Pogba and Van de Beek. Let's see what they, they can bring, in it Because, I, obviously, I hear Stevie with the whole Poch thing, and then obviously, Bear fans are catting for my man. But it's, the thing I don't understand is, since Fergie left, we've had top managers at the club. We've had Jose Mourinho. We've had Van Gaal. They don't seem to get the best out of the players. Then they go with a sort of fan hero or fan favourite, whatever you want to call Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's not word. Obviously, I'm not going to speak on Moyes. And it's like, what is the solution? Are we going to go back to the cycle of now trying to get a top manager in, hoping it will work? It should, it should work. I think Poch is obviously easily a much better manager than Oli is. Um, and the reason I was like willing to see what Oli does is because I was like, right, nothing else has worked. But clearly, it doesn't seem to be working. And it's just like, are we just going to go in the same circle? Are we going to go in the same cycle? I don't know, Stevie. Oh. Off, Michael, sorry. Even uh, I'm it's just a question I'm throwing it out there. Just, are we just going to go into the other side? Oh, Oli shit, keep him pushing. <laughs> Then find someone else. Then we get a world class man or oh, very good manager, I should say, in Poch. It may or may not work out. Oh, I'll get rid of Poch. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah but we no, get no, a fan no. Anyway, it's timing, I though. Think, I think it is timing. Agreed. But I think if every every the thing is, yeah, LVG. I feel like if he'd been given more time and allowed to bring in more players that he wanted, he would have eventually gotten it right. Like, what you could see with the team is they were starting to play the way that they want. he wanted them to play. The problem was the tempo wasn't there. The tempo wasn't there because the quality of players that he was trying to get to play the way that he wanted them to play weren't good enough to execute the football that he wanted them to execute. So if, over time, he brought us Bastian Schweinsteiger, he was washed. Rooney was washed. Herrera, come on. Fellaini. So when you have these sort of players trying to play the football that... Louis Van Gaal wants to play, that's not going to work. So, if over time, I see, well, he tried to get Muller for like, like he tried some mad things, I ain't going to lie. No, 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 I'm I, sorry. I, that, I, that, Mario, that... I let you, I let you land the plane, yeah, but now no. get off it. Get no. off it. Van Gaal <laughs> was one of the worst managers we've ever had at the club. You are forgetting how bad no, that I'm not, was. I'm not, I'm not, ah, bro, ah. bro, I promise you, I'm not forgetting how bad it is, but I can, I'm telling you, when we're talking about tactics, tactical football, that is not something he lacked in. In his case, he had issues with the personnel. He had a past his prime Rooney, a past his prime Robin Van Persie. He fell out with Ander Di Maria. He brought in Falcao, fresh off an injury, didn't really get, have a chance to bed him into the team. Trying to play midfield with Herrera, um, Schneiderlin, Schweinsteiger, 
a Parsic Weinsteiger. You compare it to the quality of players that he was coming from using that Bayern and the quality of midfielders that he had for the Netherlands, and it's night and day. So what I'm saying is that if he was given... The problem there, yeah, is that you can't really have a successful club if the only person who's really good at their job is the manager, yeah? So, obviously, we came from where we had Fergie, who basically just ran everything, innit? He had David Gill to, all right, I want, these are the players I want. You can go and do the job of getting them. But he basically ran things upwards and downwards. So, the problem LVG had is he knew how he wanted to play. He didn't have the players to play that way. If we have a system that is well set up, the board and our scouting are able to locate the players that will play the way he needs to play. And almost remember, he's European. So they work with directors of football. They don't necessarily get to pick the players they want. The, t the club brings in players and then you use those players in it. You may have some level of say. So we bring in a profile of players that he wants and then the team improves on the pitch. We didn't do that. Jose Mourinho is Jose Mourinho, isn't it? Like, you can see over at Spurs, he's got a team of strong, rugged athletes who've got technical ability. Also, they've been stuck. Them brothers starving. Their man are starving, in it. So they had their time under Pochettino where they were successful, but they didn't actually win anything. So they're ready to listen to a winner. And now we have Oli. The thing is, if Pochettino came here, we know from a coaching aspect and a tactical aspect, that's not where he's going to lack. The issue is that even with this team we have now, he'd get more out of them. Remember the Spurs squad that he started with? Bro? We have good players. We have good players. Like we don't forget, we have good players in it. We have in certain positions. We have we have issues. We have issues on the right hand side with Wamba Saka and however that works. But Pochettino, why I liked him as well. He brought through young players. He brought through young players. And you lot are telling me every day about a, a different gem in the academy. Like we got this Laird kid who apparently is uh, champing at a bit to come through and play and dominate down the right hand side. So if the, the solution is not in the first team squad. And they're not necessarily giving him the money, but you've got prospects in the youth team. Based on what I've seen him do at Spurs, I know he will give those players an opportunity. No, to that's facts. They will give those players an opportunity to come in and grow. So if you're saying that he has a better squad, he's starting with a better team than what he had at Spurs, we have a good academy that has good players coming in, and he's a tactically diverse manager who adjusts to his opposition and to the pieces that he has at hand. How do you not see a better product on the pitch? How do you not see that? Say it again. I don't know no, how we don't see that. No, no, no. I think I already said I think he's a much better manager than Oli Gunnar. I, I'm the, I think my thinking is are we just gonna go through the same cycle? I guess no one can really answer that until you give him a chance and let him do his thing in it. But my it's just more are we gonna go through the same thing in two years? Oh, I didn't work out a potch, fuck potch, uh move on to the next one, innit? That's the only thing I'm saying. Cause that it seems that we're going through cycles of managers. Every every two, three seasons, it's like, I'll oh, get new manager. Because I remember when everyone, well, I don't know what you man felt when Jose Mourinho signed, but like, finally, we got a man who knows Wagwan, who knows what's good, no excuses. He spent money, bag Pogba, bag Lukaku, bag, bag big players, you're freaking right, this is it. And it ends in literal tears. So it's just more me, I guess, not wanting to... Scared of going through the same thing again. I guess that's where I'm coming from. But don't get me wrong. I think he's a much better manager than Oli. I'm surprised that when Oli got... No, nah, Oli... No, nah, Poch was still in the Tottenham job at the time, innit? But I'm surprised they didn't try to approach him or try to snap him up, innit? At least them times, innit? So, ba so basically, Michael, you're just saying you're, you're trying to protect your heart. I am, man. <laughs> I am, I'm, a, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker. Uh... <laughs> But it, it's just one of the things where it, it, it'll probably happen this season. Like, if, if Oli doesn't get top four, I think it'll be curtains for him. And right now, it's looking like if we continue on the current trajectory, top four's a myth. And he'll lose his job, as Roy Keane was fearing. And obviously, they need to start talking to Poch. If Poch is on Sky Sports News right now, flirting, sending signals, then Ed Woodward needs to be receptive. Don't be stush. Start being receptive <laughs> to the flirting and start making something happen, man. Man's a free agent. He looks like he's he's been at work. He looks like he's ready. He's looking like, fam, he's ready to go. He's, he's flirting, in it? So make it happen. Make it happen. If Oli's not the guy, and I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm, my, my head is spinning, bro. My head is spinning. <laughs> all right. This is the part of the pod where all the rival fans have been we're waiting for. Um, Stevie, you have him as your background. Take the floor. Paul Bill Pogba. <laughs> it's come to the time, yeah, where, like, sometimes I forget that this guy has actually been at our club 
five years, yeah. And I've given him so many chances, so much allowances. And sometimes I just have to think and review. Like, if this guy wasn't black and he didn't dance, like, really cool and he didn't impose himself on social media the way he does, would I have given this guy that many allowances? And the matter of the fact is, no. Like, if you take away... Man said the matter of the fact, yeah, you don't are doing anything with the grammar, (laughs) fuck it. Just saying anything. Fam, I'm, I'm hot, fam. <laughs> fam, let us, let us, let let us, us express fam. ourselves anyway, fam. Right or wrong, let yeah. us express ourselves. Fam, he's... Oh, God, <laughs> <TV>. <laughs> fam. Let Thank us you. express ourselves. Thank you, man. <laughs> let me be creative with my wording, bro. He wants to keep us in the hood. Mariah wants to keep us in the hood. That's the problem. He That's wants to keep us in the hood. <laughs> How want you guys yeah. to come out of the hood? Are you saying Bionte <laughs> and you're saying the, the matter of the fact? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, God, see you guys. No one would have clocked that. I know no Elijah clocked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Elijah is a wordsmith, man. The, yeah, commoners, yeah. the commoners listening wouldn't have clocked. Um, <laughs> the muggles. <laughs> yeah, go on. But yeah, you're distracting from the matter. Yeah, now nah, every every other game is abject performance upon abject performance from Paul Pogba. Yeah, I can literally count the number of times this guy has given us a stellar performance, and I mean stellar on one hand. If I think about Pogba's best performance cat, in, man. in a bro, I'm I'm talking about stellar, and when I say stellar, I mean for the world class pedestal we put this guy on yeah how many world-class performances has he delivered at man united you can say ah, he's had a good game or he's had a really good game but i'm talking about games where he's actually dominated and you think yeah see your way Chelsea away no they just came to my head to be honest i'm not a good popular fan but he's broke no those those are a few games where he literally single-handedly came through and you're like right okay pogba did you're not talking about the comeback game are you the comeback games yeah (laughs) he (laughs) was shit he was shit shit. you don't need to understand that he was shit (laughs) michael i'm gonna get you that game yeah and i'm gonna make you watch it and you're not send it to me my guy send it to me The send it to I me, my guy. I got space on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think I understand. Yeah, I we we actually watched that game during lockdown, and Pogba yeah. was bang average at best. He scored two goals, bang average at best. But to me, all all that shows is that if Pogba just done what what Bruno done and just covered his game up with gunslinging, people would actually be fine with him. Which, which to me is wrong because Pogba is a much better, better player than that. My, the, my, my biggest problem with Pogba is it's not about the consistency. It's just the fact that um, even if you're inconsistent, your lows can't be this low. Like you can't be playing like you can't you can't be playing. I, El Nenny is bossing me, bro. El Nenny is the most vanilla player I've seen in my life. This guy doesn't. This guy has no forwards or back on his pads. It's just sideways. That that's all he does, and he bushed you. Like it's like stuff 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 like this is like why he 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 can never be world class because there's all there'll always be a cap where you can't have that much of a low, and then you're most of the time you're in the middle or above average, and then starts, and then sometimes you hit that top level, and of course there'll be there'll be context and various as to why you won't hit that top level. That is fine. Like, we, that is understandable. But you're coming to an age where you're in your prime. You're you're basically the leader of this team. You cannot be doing the things he's doing. Like, he's making decisions that even if I saw a 15-year-old make, I'd be like, come on, bro. Like, it's perfect. When, when he gets the ball back from party and he's there doing stepovers, five stepovers just over and over again and, and the ball gets taken off him you're like come on that's just pathetic like just just grow up like he's about to be 28 bro have you no shame <laughs> like, have you no shame of the stinkers you keep dropping at our club yeah and uh, Mario, i'm on you elijah i'm on you too yeah Why? you lot said this man should be our captain at the start yeah. of the season 
explain yeah. yourself. You said that me. Yeah, you lot said it. No, I said Pogba should be our captain. I promise you, I didn't say no, that. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said if he signs a, a new contract, I'll be fine. I'll be fine with him getting a contract um, to, be, to, to be captain. But if not, he can't be. He can't be captain. But even then, I'm just saying. But to me, that captaincy doesn't even mean anything. Maguire has it now. Just give it to Rashford. I really don't care about captaincy. Like it's. It's actually well, whatever. But back to the point about Pogba. I mean, it's so it's so annoying because Leipzig was probably the best I've seen him in a while. Best I've seen him in a while. And then to go and then do what he's done. The thing is, first half I felt a bit sorry for him because I felt like he didn't see much of what at all. So it's like you know what, fair enough. Second half. He does what he usually does. He gets on the ball too much. He gets in his own head saying, I have to save this team. And by doing that, he's just hindering the team. And then, I mean, for the p- penalty, what was really interesting that um, Jamie Redknapp said, for the penalty, um, Arsenal had the ball for one one minute and 50 seconds without a challenge from a United player. Passed the ball around. And then even as you saw Shaw, he doesn't even try and cut out the pass that William plays just that stands off him and then obviously Pogba he doesn't know anything defensively like he's like in terms of a per- positional sense he's very poor in terms of on the ball actions like in- interceptions he can be good sometimes but just positionally he's just really really poor but I mean it's just like it's get like he for me he's been really poor since the Southampton game, like people have been saying, he was good against Leicester, good against Sevilla. He, for me, he was average. Like that's not a performance where you say Pogba played well. Pogba can play much better. Like have some respect for his, his talent. He can play much better than that. And he, he need, he needs to sort himself out. He, of course, there'll be a, the excuse about COVID, no preseason, whatever. But you can't. You're being stupid. Like you can be tired. Don't be, don't be stupid. And that's it. Thing is, yeah, and we talk about COVID. You you can't play well against Leipzig. The Pogba boys are coming out. He's back now. Let's let's get it cracking. And then he plays poor against Arsenal. Then they bring COVID back. It, it can't it can't be both. You understand what I'm saying? Um, obviously we've discussed this ad nauseum, Elijah, and we've talked about how we feel it's a mental thing and how we feel that yeah he takes that pressure on himself to carry the team and when he starts poorly he just kind of digs deeper into it he tries to do too much and he just kind of goes it kind of goes the wrong way um well what do we do with him man at this point like I, I, yeah you're right he, you're right stevie he doesn't have that many amazing performances like he doesn't have that many amazing performances where you come out of that like if he played as uh, amazingly as often as he played badly i think even then his reputation would be different and he'd have just a, guy, a, a reputation as a guy who's mad inconsistent, but we see enough of him playing really well to know that he can put it all together. The vast majority of his performances are average. The vast majority of his performances, he's just okay. Like, it's weird. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, what do we do with him? Honestly, like, you talk, yeah, he's our best midfielder, then he'll have a good game. And people be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's our best midfielder. Look what he's just done. And then he'll have a poor game. And, but it's just too often, man. It, it's just too often. I'm kind of, I'm sick of talking about him, honestly. And I say that with having a weekly Paul Pogba podcast. I'm just sick, like, I'm sick of talking about these sort of performances. Like, how are you letting just, how are you letting a man like El Nenny, like, have you, have you on toast, bro? Like, you, you, you're getting the ball, you're doing the step. Bro, just keep it moving. Like, this would be like, oh, yeah. Oh, you look, Tony Cruz would do a diag. Or, bro, he just keeps the game simple. He keeps the game simple for 80 to 85% of his actions. And then um, and then in the t- 15 to 20%, he shows his top level quality. And in a game across 90 minutes, that may be four or five times. And those four or five times are the difference between a nil-nil, a two-nil, a three-one, a two... Like... That's all you need to do as a top midfielder. Like, for the most part, you just need to not make the mistakes the poor guys make. And in a handful of moments across a game, you show your op- optimum quality. You don't have to every time you get the ball do a madness. Like, And I feel like he feels like he has to. And, and he's, he's too old to still be playing that way. Like we Man. say, he's going to be 20, what, 28, 29? 28 in Feb. Bro. He plays like he's, he's with the inconsistency of a 19-year-old. And the, the thing is, there's levels to bad performances, yeah? When you buy a player for 90 million, 
you expect maybe 80% of his games, he's going to be 7 out of 10 at least. You're hoping for even 8. Yeah, this guy, what he does, yeah, he drops he drops games where he's, he's ineffective or, or average. So then that's the first level. The second level is he starts dropping stinkers. And the third level is single-handedly, like, he's becoming a liability. <laughs> so, so it's like... Liability. <laughs> Like you're 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 average, you're terrible, and then you're losing us games. Like that that chance here, yeah, where sorry that penalty he conceded here, yeah, my scream stopped here yeah, just as he was about to make a challenge, and I literally said, "When this stream starts, I know what is going to happen." And lo and behold, he did it again. And the mad thing is, yeah, we're talking about. I think we've activated this contract extension here. Yeah. Genuinely, like. At, what is he, 27, 28? Who's actually going to buy Paul Pogba now? Like, I think we need to get, our, like, cash in on him because, like, we've wasted too many years. We've wasted, basically, a genera- his whole, like, best players. Um, Man says a generation. <laughs> <laughs> it feels no. like it, bro. It feels no. like it. Bro, it's mad. Like, we, we actually need to move on for him. But who's going to pay... More than 30 million for him. He, oh, I like come him. On, come on, come on, come on. We'll get 30 million for him. The thing is, yeah, midfielders don't go for 90 million. That's yeah. attackers, that's attackers' money, isn't it? But he went for 90 million, whatever the case. We'll probably get like 60 million, 60, 70 million, and his wages off the books. Just take that and go, man. Yeah. Like, let's, like I feel so, I feel like he is now, yeah. His legacy in football is now at stake, isn't it? Like people will refer to like our oh, France, France. I don't care. International football is shit. And their team is clear, bro. Like, he can have a 5 out of 10 and they're probably going to win 99% of matches. He doesn't have a 5 out of 10, but he can. So he, he if that's the, that's the environment you need to be successful, yeah? Then fuck you, basically is what I'm saying. Like, you, right. if you need, that's right. the environment you need to be successful. <laughs> then fuck you, bro. So right. I don't want to, I just want him at this point, yeah? Just to go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Go to Spain and just wherever you want to go. Go to Spain, at Real Barca. Go and just do your thing. And at this point, just salvage your football legacy. So by the time you retire, your talent has you in the conversation with players of a similar ability level. Because as you say, he's 28 now, heading into his prime. He's been here. This is his fifth season with us, yeah? Bruv, like, he'll end up finishing his career and people just be like, Paul Pogba, eh. Bro, Darren Fletcher is a, is right now. He's a bigger United legend than than Paul Pogba. Fam. He's he's. I wouldn't even put him in the top twenty players or midfielders to play at our club. Like he's he's been, it's 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 been such a flop. It's unreal. Like it's actually unreal how bad he's been. Five seasons, and he's put in like maybe five like maestro performances. I don't know, man. Um, <clears throat> regarding Pogba, I think you've, you've already answered one question that said, is it time to part ways with him? Time um, to go. In terms of the rest of the season, though, um, there was another question. Can't find it right now, but it was about, you may, may have answered it earlier about Bruno or Pogba. Um, yeah, who... Should be the elder statement, the elder statesman in that midfield. <laughs> it's, at this point, is out uh, Bruno and Pogba Van der Beek. Like, <laughs> like, that is the correct answer. <laughs> oh, that, man. That, yeah, that's the hidden answer because, like, you flip a coin and it's like you, you're gonna get a bad performance either way. And uh, you know what, Mariah's actually swung me on this podcast because. Fernandez, yeah, he's just he's just deceiving with his numbers in it, and and the way he's been wasteful with the ball over over this stretch of time is is been too mad. But with Pogba, he's ugh, I have no words, man. None of them, none of them. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what's so funny about Bruno is that you can tell that people, most people, actually rate him because as much as he's so annoying. Most people don't say drop him, that do criticise him. They just try, they try to find a way to fit him into the team because he is so productive and the things he's able to do in that 15, 20% are ridiculous. Like that ball to Rashford, to be fair, that's a good ball. I mean, he put it into an area, but to do it first time on the swivel, that's a, that, that's a really good pass. But 
I mean, at this point, I mean, this he's not a midfield he's not a midfielder, man. He can't, he can't, he cannot midfield. <laughs> that 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 is the description of his not midfield. The grammar, the not grammar midfield. has gone to shreds. <laughs> cannot midfield. That's he, he makes me so angry watching him because that shot. When I watched that shot, I stood up and I screamed. I screamed. I saw my TV shake, <laughs> and that's and Yo, that's the end of it. What the hell? <laughs> you, what, what is going through your head? What do you think of? What, that's not football. That is not football, man. He um, needs to realize it's not these Portuguese keepers anymore, man. He's played, he's played another sport, but I promise you, Wallahi is not football. Wallahi is not football. I, I told you. I told you when we were linked to him. I told him uh, Abdi Bola, and people didn't believe me, bro. People didn't. That guy just goes out there and he does whatever he wants. And do you know what? Ah, oh, I, I can't hack it. Like, do you know what? Even if you are a winger, to do it to the level he does, it even infuriates me. But I could hack it out there as an attacking midfielder. The the, the worst thing is is that he's not even good in retaining the ball as well. Like he. Even if he does come under pressure, he's not good at retaining it. He's not good at circulating the ball. His passing, his simple passing, is shocking at times. Like, like generally, it is shocking. Like, there actually comes a time where I'm thinking: Imagine Bruno and Pogba drop a dis- disaster class at the same time. Like, w- you're basically playing with five men because <laughs> you're basically taking six players out, out, out the team. Like, well, that is so. Sc- won't well, get to see the ball. So <laughs> yeah. with DDG. Wamasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw, and Matty. That's what you're playing your position. That is it. <laughs> Basically taking out five men. It's I'm so I'm so scared. I'm so scared of that day. I am so, because even even though Bruno and Pogba were poor, they they weren't poor at the same time. I'm really scared there'll be a time where they will do the fusion dance and they will come in like go tents and just do a mad thing. And I and I I no, I mean. Our midfield, is, our midfield is just one of the most. It's it's filled with depth, but wallahi, you won't know what that depth d- d- does for you, bro. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> oh, but, no. well, your question though, Elijah, I'd stick with Pogba personally. I know you lot are probably like I, honestly, I can't even tell you why at this point. Like Pogba, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I honestly can't. Like I, for me, the way Bruno plays midfield. That makes me sick. And no, no, that, that makes me sick. And that's the way that Pogba plays at times, but like to the nth degree, like the purest version of it, the quintessential version of a sloppy midfielder. And you're not going to get me because you took away penalties and because people, you play the ball in a generally interesting position and then your attacker does some stuff and it, it gets a goal. But he's not as good as Pogba in tight situations. He doesn't have Pogba's passing variety. He doesn't have Pogba's athleticism so just off the fact that Pogba has a better skill set than him and is not as sickening as him I will go for Pogba but they both make me sick um the difference Pogba is a coward I don't think Bruno is a coward I don't think I don't even think Pogba's a coward. You think Pogba's think... a coward? Pogba doesn't hide. Do you know what? Pogba doesn't hide. And that's exactly. the fucking problem. If <laughs> Pogba was like McTominay, he would have... He he, he would look a lot better. He would look a lot better. <laughs> Throwing them Thiago performances, man. Half an hour, goes and you, don't, you don't see the ball, man. And then Bro. Out of it and then do a couple of dives. Oi, Pogba balled out today, you know. Bro, you didn't see him for half an hour. Pogba's not a coward at all. That's his problem. He actually goes out there and he takes all the pressure on his own shoulders. And like you said, Elijah, on previous pods, like, that all his teammates have commented that he always says, don't matter who's on me, don't, doesn't matter where I'm <laughs> on, on the pitch. If I ask you for the ball, give me the ball. Is that a coward to you, Stevie? Full that is insanity. That, that's what it is. <laughs> it's a damn fool. <laughs> that's insanity. But um, I want to ask you about, uh, so the, the social Poch thing, um, Poch is on Monday Night Football and he did say that um, he is ready to come back. But just to give you an uh, indication that whenever we've been linked with Poch, I've seen that he wants full control full control of the club. I've not seen him at a club where he's had the control over transfers, the final say. Um, and in terms of what he wants, he has he, 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 he has some weird... He, 
he he has some weird um tendencies to drop players and also he actually does like a target man so Osvaldo at Espanyol Lambert I think at Southampton and Osvaldo at Southampton as well Kane at um Spurs Lorente played with Saldado as well so coming into United what how do you think he would shape the team You know what? Yeah, I just, I just think with and Mariah highlighted it earlier. I just think with the personnel we currently have, I know it's not ideal, but I think any manager with a bit of a plan would be able to get more out of these players. I think, um, the, like one of the core things we really struggle against, and and in the modern game, I can't see how you do it. Is when you when we get pressed, we have absolutely no idea. So for me. I think it's less about the personnel um, that is actually on the field and more about how we actually structure our play and the different patterns of play. And you see with Pochettino, when he first came to, to Spurs, he didn't have the greatest set of players, but he was able to coach them into his way of thinking um, and get 100% out of them. Whereas with Ole, I don't think he's getting the most out of the players. You can say we've got good performances from some of them, but... I think with Ole, he's just, he's a morale man. He's a cheerleader. Do you know what I mean? He just tells them, tells them, and I believe in you. You can do it. And and that's it. Whereas with Poch, I think he's actually got ideas and plans. And I think that in itself is more than enough to, to move us forward rather than um, focusing on, on the personnel per se. Speaking about our midfield as well, I would like to go through the regular midfields that Poch played at Spurs. His first season... His, his double pivot was Mason and Bentaleb. Ryan Mason and Nabil Bentaleb. They came they came fifth that season, I think. Fifth, fifth or sixth. The next season, it was Dyer and Dembele. The season after that, it was Wanyama and Dembele. Season after that, it was Dyer and Dembele again, but it was in, in all manner of... Formations four three four two one four two three one diamond sometimes. Season after that, it was Sissoko and Winks. Um, with the midfield we have now, what do you think? How do you think he would set up? Does that worry you that he would actually continue with the sickness of Fred um, McTominay? I think from what you've said, I think McTominay potentially gets in for his physical attributes, um, but he'd play. One one bruiser, one baller. Well, Dembele was a baller with physicality. So I could see Pogba McTominay. I could see Van der Beek and McTominay. Uh, I think Bruno, if anything, would be his Deli Ali. So, yeah, I think it would be McTominay plus one. <laughs> and you know what's actually interesting? I remember in Deli Ali's first season, by the end of the season, he put Deli Ali out wide. So if that does... <laughs> If it's that David Deli Ali, hey man, it's cracking. Hey, that's the Deli Ali, the boy. That uh, uh, that's what I want. That's what I want. Give me more but, of that. Is that that Deli Ali shit? Give yeah, me- give more of that. But um, also, what's really interesting is the fact that he he worked with Shaw before he was a shell of a man, and um, he there'll be Wamba Saka as well. How do you think the fullbacks would set up? Because um, you you know with Poch, he wants his fullbacks in the attacking third, making things happen. So, um, well, what do you think happens there? Do you know why Luke Shaw, yeah, killed me? <laughs> Without a doubt, there is a player in him. Without a doubt. He chooses to be this shit. He chooses it every day of his life. He chooses to be this shit. And for that, I hate the boy. And I detest him so strongly. Um, I think I, I was watching a, a clip of him um, when we first signed him, so 19, before the, uh, the the broken, was it the broken leg that he got? Um, broken leg. Yeah. Um, trimmer, way more explosive, way more confident, way more aggressive. Um, so I think that sure is gone in it. But I think the sure he could be, and again, Teles comes in, he gets under a bit of pressure and his performance level comes up, is one that is a solid Premier League starting left back. But for me... Poch comes in, I want two new fullbacks. Two new fullbacks. Wambasaka has to go. He has to go. <laughs> and it's not his fault, man. But the modern game means that the way he plays, 
that shit he does, it, Eddie, Eddie Gordo shit, nah, <laughs> that's not that's not gonna work, man. That's not gonna work. Like you see with City, yeah, the fact that 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 team, you see with City with um, Pep spending so much money, you see with Liverpool with Trent and Robertson, how they try, like it's like almost. They, Liverpool are obviously they've got Mane and Salah, but Liverpool become Liverpool because of what they get out of those two. And the whole midfield, like the job of three senior midfielders, is to allow their two fullbacks to do their t- <laughs> to do their thing. And and the way the game is now, yeah, you cannot afford to have fullbacks who are not good going forward for a team of our level. For a team of our level, and the way teams set up against us, yeah. Imagine, yeah, we had. For example, on the right hand side, Kimmich, and on the left hand side, uh, Mendy, Furlan Mendy. Yeah, imagine how that opens up the whole pitch for the whole team. Um, teams can no longer sit on our right back as a pressing trigger. Yeah, which then oh, and because he's able to underlap and overlap, that opens up space for Mason. So the way teams are now doubling up on Mason and cutting off his angles on his left foot, because he's both footed, but he clearly prefers his left. The way they're cutting off his angle, they wouldn't be able to do that. On the left-hand side, with Mendy's width and pace, that opens up even more. Like, bro, Rashford's working. Rashford is working with nothing. Rashford's working like, this is what he's got. This is the narrow. Do your thing, bro. Like, make it pop if you can make it pop. So, for me, like, that two good fullbacks takes us up another level. It takes us up another level immediately. And I don't think that's sure on Wan-Bissaka. I really want to see this Laird kid that you lot keep telling me is so good. Um... But he's. Been, I understand he's been training with the first team, but we haven't even seen him sniff sniff the pitch yet. So um, I guess we'll talk about the Champions League. But I'm hoping that we can see him once we get these three wins out of the way, man. Yeah. Um, speaking about, you segued quite nicely there. Thanks, co-host. No, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, in these times, we play every three days. All these sickening reds, as I like to call them, are, are, are back again. They're playing in Istanbul at you at Euro- Europa League times on a Wednesday, five fifty-five. So that lineup's going to come up at, at five, and I'm going to be second. But um, yeah, what 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 type of lineup would you like to see? Do you think it's time to give Cavani a run out to give him some game time because he dearly needs it? Um, would you like to see Twan Zebe back? And would you actually like to see a strong team just to build a base for the next Premier League game which we go on to? Um, I want Pogba dropped. I want Bruno dropped. I want Fred dropped. I want McTominay dropped, yeah? I want to see Henderson in goal. I want to see Laird. I want to see Tuan Zebe. Um, Lindelof, fine, because we don't have any of our options. Tellez at left-back. I want to see Matic, Van der Beek. And Mata, I want to see Martial, I want to see Cavani, and fuck, I've run out of players. So, um, <laughs> Greenwood in there. I've run out of players, but I don't really like Greenwood. The thing is, Greenwood's very awkward now. <clears throat> He's still physically developing, and you can see that. He did make a jump when we came back from COVID. He's not yet, um, he's not net physical enough to go up against Premier League centre backs. Hence why Gabriel bodied him, and he couldn't even really get a level up on holding. Because he's a man and he's still a, clearly a boy, and he clearly can't play on the right. Because, um, because yes, Robin did it, and you don't all mention Robin, but he cut, tries to come in every single time, and he hasn't got any whip. He hasn't got an overlapper who makes the fullback and the centre back think twice about can we just follow him inside? It's almost like you see it. Teams will just give one Basaka that whole right side. So um, this is the issue where us not having a traditional winger um, makes it so tough for us because. Greenwood has to get his minutes and he has to play. Um, yeah, I guess I'd use Greenwood because I'm not using Dan James. Where's Jesse Lingard? He's just coming back from injury, to be fair. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Greenwood just because. But the one, main players I want to see play, I want to see Tuan Zebe play. I'd love to see Laird play to see what he's about. Um, Tellez, get some um, minutes under you. Van der Beek, the same thing. Matt has been good. Matt has been good since he's cut, he, he's come back into the team. So I'd be happy for him to to keep playing. Marshall needs the minutes and yeah, let, Kavani, let's see what you've got in your son because I saw you discussing it with Reams earlier and I thought what you were saying, like, with the minutes he's getting, he won't be fit till January. Bro. So, <laughs> so we, we need to give him more time now and, and, and they're shit, man. They're shit. Let's be honest. Um, we shouldn't have any problem beating them. 
um, Stevie, um, we got a big one on um, <clears throat> Sunday. Is it Sunday? I think I, I think it's, it's, it's Saturday at, at twelve thirty, which where the Premier League stitched us up by giving us basically two days rest to get back from Istanbul, the dickheads. Um, but yeah, Stevie, what do you think we're going to do for Everton on the weekend? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I have, I have no clue. You can't even predict this shit anymore. It don't matter. It actually does not matter. I had no clue he was going to do this diamond. And when I saw the lineup, I said, yeah, finally. Finally, we're going to bag a win, and, and we didn't. I was saying to Mario, the games we're supposed to win, we don't win. The games we're supposed to lose, we win. It seems like this guy, whenever his job is on the line, he does just enough. So we'll probably go to Everton, look um, look fairly convincing, and then the pressure will be off him again. I, I genuinely have no clue how he's going to play it, but I would assume he'd go back to the 4-2-3-1 um, and and try and do something from there with Pogba maybe back on the bench. Uh, I mean, I don't even I don't even want to go into that preview anymore. To to be honest, so I'll just wrap it up with a few questions, a few general ones. Um, this is a funny one. Why every game do the same players look like completely different footballers? What, that sounds like a as essential as essential. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what are you asking us? Um, I think it's a it's a plethora of reasons. What the, the way the opposition set up against us, the instructions they're given, how their teammates are playing, and the confidence it does or doesn't fill them with. Yeah. Um, how they're feeling physically. It's, it's that's a ridiculous question. Sorry, I have to do a Rodney there. But that's a ridiculous <laughs> question. He's not having it. What I would say though is that top players. Um, like the difference between like top players and a lot of the players in the Premier League is consistency. Like there are players in the Premier League who are who are really talented, but you don't get like thirty good games out of them out of thirty eight. Whereas with our lot, you can see that they've got talent, they've got quality, but the consistency isn't there, and that's why sometimes we're at the top of the game. Sometimes we're we're pretty poor. Uh, another question. Thoughts on being in Mike Feeling and bringing in a more experienced coach in Europe on Oli's co coaching staff. I, I don't see. This. I don't see his I... value so far. Someone more experienced will improve the basic flaws in our shape during matches. What are him, McKenna, and Carrick doing? All three of them are the most sourceless coaches <laughs> ever. When we had, when we had um, Fergie, we had some pizzazz in Carlos Queiroz. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can't have three ready salted men on your touchline. It's it's a joke thing. Like Carrick, he has no clue. Feeling wasn't feeling that how he got sat. Like no, why did he play? Do you know what's so funny? I will never forget the time when Oli was in the, the we was in the caretaker job, and people were saying we can't get Oli in without getting feeling as well. <laughs> and I just didn't understand it. Um, I didn't understand it, but DJ Luck and fucking MC Neat, man. We've said it before. <laughs> I will we'll, we'll say it again, man. Let's 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 keep it a buck, man. Like I I don't think that Oli gets necessarily the support he needs from that from that team and that that coaching team. Like he, like I've always say, whatever the manager's qualities are, he needs a team that complements those qualities. It's very obvious he's fantastic at the personnel kind of player management stuff, um, people getting on with him, understanding the ethos of the club, making sure play, play players respect playing for Manchester United. Where he lacks is tactically. So because he lacks tactically, he needs somebody to come in with those attributes and to help plug those holes. And together you have a good team. I don't know what Carrick's qualities are. We assume he's good because he was a techie thinking midfielder. McKenna comes with a big rep. And Mike Phelan, just have it, lads. Just have it. <laughs> Mike Phelan, yeah. My, fam, my feeling was down under, no. you know. <laughs> Bloody something, yeah, something Mariners. He wasn't even their manager. He was their yeah. sporting director. Fam, they had to send him like 12,000 miles away. Coming Nobody out, went right now. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said something. Maybe I'm going crazy. Nah, nah, nah. He, he, he did it. He, he did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Fam, he was he was on the other side of the world, and we've brought him all the way back 
to do a nonsense job at United. It's madness. It's madness. But uh, it's it, it's interesting because uh, McKenna was quite highly rated at Tottenham, and I always remember when the game we were talking about earlier with Man City, where Pogba scored scored the two goals. Carrick was the one that told Pogba that he needs to be making those runs into the box more. So quite interesting that um, he does apparently he does the player the player side of the coach and McKenna's more the tactical one. Apparently McKenna also really likes Fred and he was the one that recommended him to to us. Which, um, if that's true, I want him gone I- immediately. Um, but yeah, I have no more questions. This was really tough. It got, as I remembered more and more of that Arsenal game, it just got worse and worse. And as you can see, more and more of us have dropped off just to signify how much we dropped off from Tuesday to, to Sunday. Anyway, as always, glad for having you, Stevie, for being the only one that stayed and to the ghost of Mariah and Michael. Uh, then you listen, use the hashtag, get involved in the conversation, like, subscribe, share on podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. Um, yeah, we're out. Peace. Peace. When I spit bars in a rave, man, I go hard, last and tan,